Thank you very much. Thank you, Acrolinks, for inviting me here to talk today. It's a real pleasure. I work for Dassault System. I didn't include anything about the company really on the slide. Just to tell you, we have about 16,000 employees globally. We are the 3D experience company. Pretty much anything you want to build in CAD, you could build this little clicker, you could build an airplane, and then simulate it, test it, keep track of all the parts, etc., and do a product life cycle management from A to Z. So that's why we are called the 3D Experience Company. And we're global, of course. We've got about you know, 16,000 employees. I, it's been a long story with Acrolinks. Andrew told me that I was ruining his sales cycle. <laughs> it can't take eight or nine years to implement Acrolinks. Well, before I get started, does anyone else work for a French company here? <laughs> yeah, I didn't think so, because our story is somewhat different. Uh, yeah, it's different. It feels like, like the pyramids. It made me think of, in the 1980s, I was a runner, and I wanted to run marathons, and I set a goal of running three and a half hours or less. And I ran my first one. I didn't do it. Then I ran my second one. I had trained hard and spent a long time preparing, and New York City Marathon, 1986. At mile 20, I hit the wall. I'd never hit that in my first one. And I said, oh, this is not good. And at mile 23, I started getting cramps in my legs, and I was falling on the ground. I said, I'm never going to get there. Then I ran about another minute, and I fell on the ground again, and more cramps. And then finally, I made it through. And I'm more proud of that effort than I am of the one where I, I finally made my goal, because I had to struggle so much. And that's how it's been getting <laughs> Acrolinks. It's been a struggle. I started in 2006. I was doing a project using SDL Trados. I thought we localized into, still do, into 13 languages. And I thought, can we improve our content before we send it off to SDL so that we can get more 100% fuzzy matches and lower our cost? And as I was doing that testing, which, by the way, showed I could save 12% in localization costs, I heard about Acrolinks. Two years later, I got to go to a techcom conference in Europe. It's the largest technical communicator conference in the world. And there I saw a presentation by Andrew. And I went up to him afterwards and said, yeah, I'm going to get this product. Hence the long story. <laughs> Many years of internal <clears throat> discussion is a good word, polite word. And then in 2017, finally, we had a major breakthrough when we got the OK to purchase Acrolinks. We did roll holder training in the spring, and then we went into production in the fall of 2017. And then in 2018, we started doing biweekly evaluation meetings with the terminologists, sysadmin, Andrew, and Melissa, who are here from my team, from our team, DASO team. And that's, that's a brief history, a clean history. And in 2019, we've started doing a yearly review of the processes and establishing KPIs that we'd like groups to hit. Why did we want Acrolinks? A lot of this will sound very similar to a lot of other people who have spoke today and yesterday. We have about half of our writers, user assistance developers is our term, who speak English as a second language, maybe as a third for those folks in India for the most part. And their English just isn't meeting the quality standards that we wanted. Our style guide, yeah, it's 
like many others, it was, I had to print out a PDF of it once, which was a hard task in itself to print, to get it to be a PDF, and then print it out, it was 150 pages or something crazy. How is everybody going to remember that? Terminology, same problem as I've heard before. Do you call it this, that? How do you spell it? Is this capital? Is this lowercase, etc.? But we wanted Acrolinks also to become a training tool so the user assistance developers would be reminded in their face, because a lot of times that's the only thing that works, and sometimes it doesn't, because they can always ignore it. But that, we thought, could be a good training tool to get them to learn to write the way we want them to write, to speak our voice. Yeah. yeah. Um, again, another common theme. We have, I think globally now, within all of DASO, we have 110 user assistance developers. We have 1.5. I think I'm the point five editors for that much content. It's just out of control. There's no way it works. So because of that, we, we wanted a baseline copy edit that we could apply to all of our content and improve the overall quality and consistency because we are a pretty disparate group. We have writers in North America, all over Europe, mostly in France, but in other countries too as we acquire more companies. In India, we have quite a few user assistance developers. I have 16, I think, on my team, but eight, half of my team is in India. And we even have at least one writer in Australia. She works for the Geovia brand. We've got 85 user assistance folks globally. And our story is different because Dassault is French. Okay. I love the French. I studied French in college, so I can speak fondly of my days of living in France. But working for, for a French company is a little different. We've got brands. Our content is divided by brands. It's different. Melissa works for Enovia, which is our product data management brand. And I work for SolarWorks. Andrew, our sysadmin, works for SolarWorks, which is a 3D CAD design brand. Geovia works building mining, doing mining research. And it's divided that way, and it's created incredibly diverse sets of content. And we're trying to get all of that under one umbrella. And Acrolinx has been a key part of that. Our experience with Acrolinks in production has been good, very good. We have, we experienced a lot of the, and I'm so appreciative of all the people who have given us ideas about how we can get people to run Acrolinks. We have a content management system within SolidWorks, within one of our platforms, where we have the Ixiasoft CMS, if anybody uses that. And with Ixia's help, we got them to throw up a message when you go to release a file, an object, have you run Acrolinks? Yes, no. They can click yes, even if they didn't, but at least that's one of our methods of trying to get them, the users, our writers, to run Acrolinks. But that's, that is a challenge. We run usage reports to see who's using it. And, oh, this one's a power user, so Beth, I think, with your master plan, master group there, that's something that got my, my brain going, hmm, maybe we can think of something like that to shame or gamify others who aren't doing so well to run Acrolinks. We ran a baseline review before and then afterwards to record improvement over time. Typical objectives is 80, score of 80 to 85. We do have regular meetings to tweak the content using the guidance wizard, term sets, etc. 
that's run again through Melissa and Andrew, the sysadmin, the chief terminologist, and others, a few other role holders. Yeah. We only use it, Acrolinks, on pretty much on new content or on content that's been majorly modified because we have a lot of localization. At least SolidWorks has 13 languages. Does so, for the most part, has FIGS, FIGS, and maybe one or two others. But it's a lot of money to localize. And you have to have enough bang for the buck if you're going to majorly change something that exists. OK, then you can run Acrolinks and make the style guide improvements. But otherwise, we try to limit that to just new content, because that's never been localized before, and it's free first time. So we have to consider that localization impact. One of our brands, Samulia, they do the really strong, high-level testing of products. They have content that they get from developers, and they have licenses of Acrolinks that the developers use, so they can get a baseline copy edit on that. So they've expanded it beyond just the user assistance people to actual developers. OK, what has gone well? People like it. It's a beautiful user interface. I don't know who designs the user interface here, but nice job. The in user interface is, is really cool, and it's, it's a great looking product. You get all sorts of impressive numbers. We're not quite sure yet what the best way to work with them is. We're, we're working on it. <laughs> we're working on it. But one thing that this is primarily data, again, from Inovia, from Melissa. One thing that we like about it is that it shows areas where we are doing well and areas where we could improve. And that, if you can get it down to, again, I forget who talked about the topic-specific level, but if you can get it down to the level, then you can talk to a writer to say, we see that this is an issue that typically has come up in your content. How can we work on this to improve it? Some of our issues that show up are, in grammar, we need to get people to focus on the correct use of hyphens, some issues around spelling that maybe we can resolve, maybe we cannot, because of just the way the system is configured. A big issue is hmm, writing concisely. I'm sure that's a common issue here. I think our threshold at 31, Andrew, is that the max words per sentence? I think it's 31, and yeah, guilty, guilty. <laughs> So that's, that's an issue, getting people to write concisely. And then terminology issues, unclear use of should, is, is something that we need to hammer on. And also, we use entities on one of our platforms, and they use variables. And that's an issue we're working on as well. And other things gone, that has gone well is Kristen and Zach. They have been extremely supportive of us, and they've helped grease the, the pathway to success. Challenges. Ooh, there's always challenges, right? There's never problems. There's always challenges in the management world. The timing of our start was a challenge. We were in discussions right around the time when Acrolinks was in the middle of moving from the embedded interface that you got right inside your XML. We used Ditto XML, by the way. And they were moving from there to the sidebar, and that put us in no man's land, so to speak. Yeah. Running. Acrolinks, again, getting people to run Acrolinks, that's been a challenge. And again, thank you for all the cool ideas that I've heard during the conference. False flags, yeah. Hmm. I guess many of you have had false flags. We've 
that is very discouraging to, to the writers because if they see everything is flagged and they read it, it doesn't make sense, then they get discouraged from running it, which we can kind of put two and two together and say, okay, maybe they're not running it because they just get everything is flagged. <laughs> so, so, but we've gotten the system now to a point through configuration, through Melissa and Andrew and others fine work to configure the system to get it to within the last six months, I think we've got it to a point where our metrics can be can be really useful and meaningful to us. Yeah, short topic flags. They encourage us to write in XML short objects, but if you've got something that gets flagged in there, it gives you an artificially low score. Uh, that we don't, I don't know if you have a solution for that yet. And the legacy content, that's another item I've already discussed. We're not quite sure how to how to handle that. But Acrolinks, I'm sure, will help us. Uh, let's see. On the Acrolink side, we did have some CSM support issues at the start. We hit some snags. There were some disappointments, to be honest. But Kristen always helped get us through. And now with Zach helping us, we're back on track. The training, we were trained by content rules, and we found that the training maybe was a little bit too long. I don't know if anyone else has used content rules as your, your trainer. We found that we got thrown the kitchen sink and more at us, and maybe it could have been customized more just towards what we needed. <coughs> you know, the scheduling of the training that I think could have been modernized a little bit. Google Cloud, put a calendar up there, not an email to, to me, I was the project manager. Oh, can you ask seven people when they're free and then send it back to me and then by the time I get the dates back, oh, I'm sorry, that date has already been taken, kind of stuff. Well, that could have been done better. And Melissa's already asked questions about the <laughs> getting the dictionary and guidance wizard handled and freed the masses here. And now we're, I don't know if this is a challenge, but mm, yeah, I better stop there. We, we're thinking of moving our licensing. We're individually installed licenses, but we're thinking of moving to a enterprise model and to the software as a service model. So that's not a challenge, but it's a cloud hanging over our head because we got to submit budget requests for next year by the end of this summer, by August, and so it's becoming more essential that we have talks with our friends. All right, uh, where do we go from here? Again, the, many of these will sound similar to, to people who have presented already. We want to expand our mm, flagship product is a called Katia. It's based in France. The SO system is based outside of Paris. And they decided not to join our effort at the beginning. But there have been some management changes over there now. And they've got 26 writers. They've got the biggest group globally for us. But we have hopes that we can get them into the fold. And if we can get our flagship brand into the fold, we think that'll really give us the power to get elsewhere, to expand it elsewhere. Because we would like to expand it to other teams. We'd like to expand it to support and marketing, education, training, all these groups that other people have mentioned that it's not easy. It's not easy. And our problem, our challenge is that we're a disparate group. We're six brands with a special form of hierarchy that we don't think we'll have a real good chance at breaking out of, but we're working with it. One thing we do want to do is automate to get regular checking of everything and then at least gather the metrics from those regular checks, then maybe trawl that data. If we find low scores, find out 
why they didn't get improved. Maybe that could lead us to obsoleting content if we can get also the data from page hits, say, oh, right, we've got only 50 people that have read this topic. Who cares if it's a 50? Let's get rid of it. It's not viewed enough, stuff like that. So we can dig into the why. All right, now I'll just discuss some suggestions for potential customers. I've talked to several people during the conference who are not yet Acrolinks customers, and these are our suggestions for, for you, potential customers. Build up support. I mean support. By that, I mean kind of money. <laughs> That's what, <laughs> what I mean. Build up money. That was the big blocker from us. We were trying to build from the ground up. Every brand, all right, you have 20 writers out of 100, so we, you need to contribute 20%. That's going to mean we estimate this. And you have maybe 15 writers. It was a nightmare to try and pull that all together. So try to get executive level stakeholder support from somebody who has a budget. Another good thing we did is we ran a pilot project. The French are very big on running pilot projects, so we did. We did, and it was a great proof of concept, worked really well. Zachary also asked me to mention that the, your CSM is happy to help you develop a success story. Somewhere along my journey, pre-Zachary, I got a success story from an Acrolinks person, and the ROI just was a no-brainer. It was like I went to my boss at the time, and I said, in six months, we're going to more than pay for this thing. And that wasn't even including some questionable metrics it was giving me about including my sales to $12 million or something like that. I wasn't going to go there. But I could say localization costs and costs of not hiring an editor, basic costs like that, ROI is, will win all, all the time. Yeah, global solution. If you are a multinational company, try to work from the top down, not the bottom up. And I got to be good friends with Mike Rizzo. He's our purchasing agent that helped us. And I say hi to Mike all the time, and he's shaking my hand because I know he's fighting for me. And I have him on my side. And if you've got purchasing on your side, they're the ones that negotiate. And I found that to be a key item for us to, as part of the getting support, getting someone in purchasing that I know personally, and he'll, he'll fight for us. Yeah. You need also people who are going to commit, who are going to actually do the work. Melissa, God bless her, she, she throws her heart and soul into all the term management. Andrew does sysadmin. Incredible job for, for the whole team. You got to get people to commit. And then IT, of course, if you're going to do an implementation, you need to get your IT department on board as well. Earlier, the better. And then just have an understanding that this is going to take a long time. I, I never thought it would take as long as it took. But just understand it so you could walk others through the journey and set expectations right that, OK, here's my research phase. And then I have to go to a proof phase. And then my purchase phase. And then, oh, yeah, we're done. No, 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 no. And then you got to do your implementation phase. And then what everybody kind of poo-poos, but it's very important, as we've heard today, is the maintenance afterwards and regular meetings to really fine tune Acrolinks to get it to do what you need it to do. Mm, for the role holder training phase, these are all hopefully basic. Train for redundancy. We had a terminologist and a linguist. We never quite understood what the difference was between the two terms, but our linguist ended up leaving the company. She worked for Giovia out in Vancouver. But luckily, Melissa was there and her boss. Uh, Sue was also somewhat trained in it. So we had redundancy where we could fill that gap. So big recommendation, trained for redundancy because people move. Block plenty of time. It took, I don't know, what? Every week we had 
three hours of meetings or something for a six-week period or a seven-week period. It was quite long and, and intensive. And we had to do our jobs at the same time, of course. So plan for plenty of time. I was doing the project manager role. That was more important getting up until the training phase. So in, if you are thinking of doing this and you're the project manager, don't worry, you'll be freed pretty much once you hand it over to the training phase. We used a process they call train the trainers. I don't know if, what the model, if it's still the same model, but that went well, because they also offered us, well, we can send a trainer to train everybody, and we just said, well, hmm, How's it going to work with France and India and Australia? And so we just said, nah, train the trainers. That, that worked pretty well for us. And then I think finally, in the implementation and production phases, uh, again, I'm, I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but start with out of the box, really. And we took that to heart and really simplify. Don't take your... 150 page style guide and take whatever rule is specific to you on a Tuesday in November, you can't write the word whatever and try to get that in because you'll just kill your writers, They'll, they won't like you. Uh, one thing that I also remember someone recommended earlier was creating a get it start, getting started guide. Even though it's not complex software pretty much, People like getting something, even if it's a PDF that they can print, they like that, and it really gives them some sort of security, we found. And again, Andrew, thank you. God bless you for, for creating that. We have a, I don't know if it's more complex than anyone else, but you gotta think about how you want to parse your data we have six brands, okay, so every brand wants their own section. How, am I, how is my team doing? And then, well, SolidWorks, for example. I have two platforms. One works on the desktop and one works on the 3D Experience platform, okay. And then on the 3D Experience platform, I have North America and I have India. Now we have France. And so, and every brand is going through the same thought process. Okay, how am I gonna get the metrics that I want? So you need to think about that carefully. Hopefully you have, you'll be lucky enough to have somebody with sysadmin skills who can do that for you, but that I know has taken Andrew a lot of time and he's had to interface with all of the other brands too and that takes his time. So it's something that takes time but it's very important so that each user group can get the data they want. And regular bi-weekly meetings is what we do to discuss and hammer out all the issues. That's it. I think back to my running days, and in 1988, I did run my three hour and 29 minute marathon. I, I chose wisely, I went to Omaha, Nebraska, and it was 29 degrees, but I did it. So I, I made that goal, and so I'm very hopeful <laughs> that I will be able to achieve, we will be able to achieve the same with Acrolinks for Dassault system. And I'm done. Any questions?